All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to our sixth scratch lesson. Believe it or not, you're almost halfway done. Now, we have a new topic that we're gonna discuss, but first let's recap about things we've already covered. We covered the basics of scratch, how to get it started, and how it became to be what it is. We talked about some motion and events and how different actions trigger new actions. And in our last video, we talked about loops and how you can incorporate loops in your Scratch project to create a cool game. Now, what we're gonna be talking about is variables and conditions. Now, I've grouped these two together because we're going to be touching very briefly on both topics, just sticking to general ideas so we can add a new component to our game. So what are variables? Let's start with that. Well, variables are something that's used in code to store information. They can store numbers, words, characters, and different data types, but we're just gonna focus on numbers for now. They can have names. You can name your variables to be more organized and to understand different things. You can have names like X or Y, or you can have names like score or tracker or something like that. And variables keep track of values. They store a specific value for something. For example, in the way we're gonna be using it today is to store the number of points scored in the game. Now, I want you guys to not get too confused about this. Like I said, we're gonna be covering the very basics of this. So don't worry if you're a little bit confused at first, you'll definitely get the hang of it and you'll understand how these things work. Now, why are variables used? Well, for one, it allows you to say the variable name instead of repeating numbers again and again. Code can be a bit hard to read sometimes, so having variables like this help it help you understand what you've written and why it works the way it does. And another uh, helpful aspect of this is that it can change. You can change the values of variables in an easy way. Instead of saying x plus 1, or instead of saying 15 plus 1, you can say x plus 1. Now, I have an example below. It says 5 plus 10 equals 15. And you can do another way where it says a equals 5 and b equals 10. a plus b equals 15. Now, in this case, it doesn't really give you that much of a difference. It's pretty much the same. But when you begin to do a lot more complicated programming or coding much more complex things, it will be harder for you to not use variables and variables allow you to kind of manipulate the values in them and change them to whatever serve whatever purposes they do in your code. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is conditions. Conditions may seem like a big word to you right now, but don't worry. Conditions allow you to account for multiple scenarios or possibilities. There are two types of conditions we want to focus on just for now. One is the if condition. And essentially all it says is if something is true, then something else will happen. Now it's like saying if A is true, then B will happen. Uh, here's an example. If uh, there is no food in the kitchen, then I will not eat. So it's based off of one thing, something else will happen. Now, another type of condition is an if-else condition. It says, in plain words, it means if blank is true, then blank will happen. Otherwise, blank will happen. So it provides two possible solutions based on one condition. So if something is true, do action one, otherwise do action two. And it accounts for two possibilities. Now, I've added a table to the right over here, and it kind of just shows you how conditions work. So over here, we have the if. So if blank, if it is true, this will happen. If it's false, this will happen. And then otherwise, this will happen. So now this is a little bit complex and it may be difficult for you to understand, but hopefully after seeing how we've used it in our code, you'll get a better idea and understanding of how these things work. Now let's move on to our Scratch environment to see exactly what conditions can do and how they can help us. All right, so I've opened up my Scratch environment once again, and here is shown the code that we left off with in our last video. So if you've forgotten what our program does, let's start here. And basically, the ball comes at us, and we jump, 
and this will go on for 10 iterations. And in the back, you can see some clouds moving again and again and again. All right, so I'm gonna stop this before it makes me jump over the wall 10 times. And this is a pretty good game for me, I would say. And now we wanna add just a couple more things to make this more enjoyable to play. For instance, a score. Now, we want to add some sort of score or counter that keeps track of how many successful attempts the scratch sprite has had over jumping over the ball. So we're going to wanna to do this in a way where when the ball comes at the sprite, and it jumps, if the scratch sprite touches the ball, then the score will not increase. If the scratch sprite jumps over the ball successfully, then the score will increase by one. So how do we do this? Well, first steps first, something we've talked about today was variables. Now we can add a variable to our scratch program. So we can go to this tab over here that says variables and click on it. Now. I already have one variable and it's called score. And the way I made this was you click make a variable and you simply put in the name. So I would put in score and I clicked for all sprites and you click okay. Now that I've already had this made, I'm going to click X, but for those of you who don't have it made yet, click okay. So I'm gonna just select this and make sure that your score variable is selected. Now we want all this means is that our score will be shown right here. So just forget the fact that mine says three, it was something from before, yours should say zero. Now, what are we gonna do with the score variable? Well, the first things first is when the game starts, we want it to set equal to zero. We wanna reset after each game. So we're gonna put this right here and it says my variable, but that's not the name of the variable I want to use. I wanna use score. So I click on this and I click score. So we say set score to zero, which means every time the game starts, the score will be set to zero. Now, when I click the green flag, the score is set to zero. However, when I jump, it's still not increasing and that's because we haven't coded it yet. So how do we do this? Well, we're gonna need a condition. This depends on when the ball, when the sprite jumps. So we're gonna wanna put this under the jump event. Now, when space key is pressed is referring to when you click the space key to jump. Now, here's a way to do this. We can say, we're gonna use an if else condition. Now, we're gonna add this over here. And what we want it to do is if the sprite touches the ball, we, are gonna, we don't want anything to happen. If it doesn't, which in other words means otherwise, then we're gonna increase by one. So how do we do this? Well, first steps first is we're going to go to something called sensing. Now this helps us get the pieces we need for conditions like this. If you're unsure about what to use, just keep in mind the shape. Now, if you look at the shape of this, it fits perfectly in this kind of space that it has for us. So let's essentially add it in. Now we have this condition. We want to use is the sprite touching the ball. And so how we would do this is we look for touching blank question mark. So if, and because we're clicked on the scratch tab, it says if scratch is touching, and we want it to be, we want it to ask if it's touching the ball. So if scratch is touching the ball, and then, and then we're gonna add in the additional code. So if the scratch is touching the ball, what do we want to happen? Well, we want something to happen to the variable. So we'll go to the variables tab, and now we wanna change the variable by a number. Now we said that if the scratch is touching the ball, we don't wanna change it by anything. Else, otherwise, we wanna change it by one. So if the scratch is not touching the ball, change the score variable by one. Now, it's not going to decrease because it's positive one, so it's gonna always go plus one when the sprite does not touch the ball. Now, if we want it to decrease when it does touch the ball, we can do negative one, but we're not gonna do that. 
we're going to just change it by zero. And what this does, it, it keeps the variable the same. Nothing happens if it touches the ball. So we're going to say change variable by, and then change this number to zero. So before we run this and visually see what happens, all this is saying is when the skip base key is pressed, glide up and down, so jump. And if the sprite touches the ball, we're not gonna change the variable by anything, meaning we're not going to increase it. But if it doesn't touch the ball, we're going to increase the score by one. And again, over here, it resets the variable to zero. So when we start a game, it automatically goes to zero. So let's start playing this. Well, we say good morning, we have the ball come at us, the clouds begin moving, we jump. It didn't touch the ball, so it added a point. and added a point again, and it added a point again. Now, let's see if I don't jump and it touches the ball. You see that the three stays the same, nothing happens. But if I jump, it changes to four. And if I don't, it stays at four. So now you can see that we have the score in a sort of way that it it allows the ball to come at us and if we successfully jump it adds a point and if not it doesn't do anything now if i click play again you'll see that the score resets to zero and everything happens once again where i jump and i get a point or if i don't jump and i don't get any points so this is all i had to cover for us today it is really just lightly touching on what variables and conditions are and how we can use them Again, if you're unsure about any of the topics I've been covered in this video, please don't hesitate to contact me or just rewatch some of the previous videos to try to get a better understanding of the topics I've discussed. I hope you guys enjoyed learning everything that we covered today, and I hope to see you guys in our next lesson. Have a good day!